Okay, guys, uh, this is the Cruise and Comfort 12 volt air conditioning system. This is going to be running off of our 12 volt system. It's supposed to be low draw power. In the last video, we just uh, I just explained um, how to assemble the box. Right now, we're just um, putting weights on the box uh, for the liquid nail for the wheel wells. So what I did was, because this has the condensation tray, which is not required, but it's recommended, I uh, did 14 by 26. You can see the little drip holes right here and there. And there's also two more back there. So basically I'm going to run four lines, four clear plastic tubes down into the floor uh, not into the floor but outside so straight down outside I'm gonna drill some holes right here for the um, for the condenser fans um, so that's pretty much it so I drilled the uh, pre-drilled the four required holes two in the front two in the back there's the two holes right there and uh, requires a 5 8 bolt and I'm bolting it directly on this wood uh, which is glued down there and I'm also going to screw it into the floor with these two wood cross beams. It's also going to have the bed frame and wall right ha right there which will be screwed into which will also be screwed into the walls on either side so there's going to be plenty of support there. It is a heavy air conditioning, that is for sure, so um, you definitely want to make sure that your weight distribution is set properly. I have a lot of weight on this side. We're going to compensate with water and gear and kitchen on this side, and also the shower, of course, is over here. So um, I'll give you a step-by-step. -step. See you in the next one. All right, step two. I've got the condenser unit and um, you have to make your own brackets so I went ahead and used some bolts and uh, forgot what they're called for solar panels which worked really nicely uh, I got some aluminum from Lowe's I'm gonna have to cut these pieces obviously uh, they're too long I want them to be up close uh, to the bottom of the van uh, it needs to be 10 to 15 degrees with the bigger port highest. So it, this needs to face towards the front of the vehicle when we're running down the road, and it needs to be 10 to 15 degrees, which is something like something like this. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, just uh, All I did was put this aluminum on a table and bend it down and of course you can still get these caps off I'll show you in the next video how I mount it hey right, guys this is a bit of a difficult video to make uh, I'm gonna try to show you without being able to see very well when I'm filming oh, there we go so I use the two uh, cross beams on the bottom of the van. I use self-tappers. You can see there. It's supposed to be 10 to 15 degrees, which it is. And um, the bigger port needs to be higher, which it is. The port's on that side over there. Um, it's open to the front of the van, so you can see here Try to get a better view of this if I can. There's the front. And that's that. So wind will be pulled through the fans. I just got to wire it up. I've got the tubes coming in already. I'm going to go ahead and film that for you and show you how I did that. Uh, I have to hook it up still, of course. Hey okay, guys, so I mounted a now oh, there's got some ants coming in from the the poles down there. 
I don't know why they're coming in here. There's no food in here. Okay, so um, obviously I have to fill that with some uh, some foam, and um, I'm going to have to separate these lines. There's some things that I used. I don't know if you remember my previous videos for the water lines to keep them separated, so I'm going to get the same things for these lines. Anyway, so, so far I've got the two lines coming in. I haven't tightened them down yet. I've got the condenser fan. Uh power going. I've got the thermostat wired up, which I don't really want to use. I want to go to the Serbo GX. Uh, I've got an email placed with the owner of Cruise and Comfort uh, to see if we can get that done. Um, I still have to get some power cables. Uh, positive, negative ground. And um, I've got a uh, an 80 amp uh Blue C resettable fuse or breaker. Um, and I've got another Victron battery protect. I've got two. Why do I have two? Well, that one's for the DC system right there, which I showed you in the previous Victron wiring videos that uh, if it goes to 20%, it will cut off the DC power to my DC fuse uh, block there. But that does not uh, work for the AC because the AC is actually going to go directly to the inlets um, for the power and negative here. So it's going to bypass all of this stuff. So it needs to have its own battery protect. So when it senses it's at 20%, it will cut off the AC and the DC um well, the DC uh, fuse panel there will get also cut off at that breaking point. Okay, so I got to go to the store and get some wire. And, um, oh, and the, the drip tray and the, um, there, uh, I'm sorry, there's um, a water condensation drip right there also for the tray there's one there and there there's also another drain too they say right there it's gonna supposed to come out here and there's a drain there and there really didn't want to put six tube drains but um, I guess I have no choice and uh, there should be enough room for them to all go down that same hole uh, maybe I'll even tie them in together with some T's. Maybe put this and this in together with a T and then have one line go down or put all three of them on that one line and one line go down and do the same thing in the back. I don't know yet. We'll see. I'm just discussing it with you guys. Off to the store again. Hey guys, so this will be my last video under the van. I'm not 100% finished, but... Um, I just need to get this out of the way. Uh, it's very close. I can't really back up much further. Um, but you can see here I've got the tubes hooked in. Uh, hooked in. They kind of go upward. And I've got some hose clamps here. I don't want the hoses touching together because they're different temperatures. <clears throat> so the one part where this is laying sort of on the radiator portion so I'm gonna take a hose uh, a clamp that's got like two hose clamps in it uh, used it on the plumbing and I'm gonna put it right there to keep them together and then I'm gonna put another one uh, right here to keep these lines separated they just barely don't touch here I'm gonna move them over as far as I can away from each other and then I'm gonna do some spray foam in there uh, to keep it locked down see you in the next video hey guys okay so I've got all the tubes ready I got a couple T's uh, for the uh, 3 8 inner diameter tube I believe that's what I got 3 8 um, anyway um, actually it might be 5 8 uh, I have to check. 
So I've got the main drain line coming straight down. I've got the two pan uh, drains coming into a T going straight down. And then there's another T that comes from this side where I've got both the uh, pan drains coming in to a T there. And then I also have the second main drain line coming into a T. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it or not. Uh, it's going to be a trial and error thing. This comes down into that second T right there and down, straight down. Um, so I've got the two, uh, the smaller uh, threaded tube and the bigger threaded tube wired into the condenser. That wire goes straight to the condenser uh, which the the instructions tell you which one is uh, which one goes where the colors don't match up so it will tell you which ones uh, to put where um, I've got positive and negative going to an 80 amp breaker see uh, it's um, what is it the C forgot exactly blue C connector or 80 amp uh, fuse breaker then I have it going to its own uh, smart shutoff battery monitor which I showed you in the Victron wiring uh, video and that's set at 20% so at 20% that's gonna cut off the AC in an emergency and also the second one there, the first one, should I say, cuts off the DC power there, and then the AC system, or the inverter, has its own built-in automatic shutoff. So, we'll drain the batteries down, make sure these all work properly, of course. Anyway, that goes to the breaker, that goes to the out, and then the in comes from directly to the battery source so it skips the shutoff um, so it's going directly to the positive and negative pole there from the battery so that's pretty much it in a nutshell um, I still have to charge it with non peg uh, um, refrigerant which that will be the next step and I just got to turn it on. I can probably turn it on now and just turn the blower on just to make sure it's right. Um, I'll let you know how things go in the next video. It's late in the day and I'm not going to be able to get this thing charged up today. So I'll probably do it tomorrow. See you in the next video. Hey everybody. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to charge your AC unit per the manufacturer cruising comforts instructions. <clears throat> I went ahead and got a um, what's called a a cozy vac cozy vacu on Amazon comes with the uh, the uh, the gauge set and the vacuum vacuum gauge set so right now I am vacuuming the line so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the adapters that it comes with you're gonna put them on in the um, in the closed position, which is going to be expanded, you'll put it on, and then you're going to clockwise it, clockwise it, uh, in the closed position, meaning it's open the Schrader valve on both sides, so you're going to put it in the closed position. That means it's, it's opening up the, the Schrader valve. Kind of confusing, actually, uh, because I'm not an AC guy, I didn't understand that. I thought open meant it's open in the lines, and closed means it's closed the, the valve or the Schrader valve, but that's not the case. So, closed means it's open that up. Don't ask me why, I don't know. AC guy will tell you why. So basically, there it says closed, but it's open. So I opened up the lines. I've opened these lines up, which is counterclockwise. They're both open. I've got the tube going to the vacuum pump and it's running. Manufacturer Cruise and Comfort says let it run for 15 minutes. Um, it doesn't matter if you let it run longer. It's just taking all the moisture out of the lines. Uh, some auto mechanics, if you look at a car, I know this is not a car system, but they'll tell you to let it run for 30 minutes. So 
anything over 15 minutes is fine and then we need to make sure that there's no leaks so what's going to happen is I'm letting this run for 15 to 20 minutes I'm going to close these clockwise once they're closed I'm just going to let it sit there and I'm going to watch the gauges it should be at negative 29 psi on both of them which right now it's negative 29 on both which is great uh, but what the real test is once I turn off the vacuum well I have to close these lines first turn the vacuum on and then it needs to make sure we need to make sure that it's at negative 29 and it stays that way or that means we'll have a leak in the system and then if you have a leak in the system you will have to recheck all of your little fittings make sure it's all tight go to the condenser below your van or your project and make sure everything is tight so anyway I'll be back in the next video and I'm going to show you per the manufacturer instructions on how to charge this thing it's a little bit different than a car AC uh, the first can oh for uh, let me tell you about the cans you need to be using straight refrigerant 134 a it's recommended to use the national no additives no stop leak or peg oil pag oil it needs to have nothing just the refrigerant this will use two and a half cans uh, just about two and a half cans for this system the uh, cozy vacu system comes with a, a puncture device for these cans which is great these are also self-sealing cans it's got a little rubber fitting in there so you can actually take this off it's completely sealed which is really great um, the first can which this is different than a car AC we're gonna leave the AC system off and we're going to hold the can upside down and allow liquid as much as possible to get into this system while the AC is off and both of these valves are open not just the cold both of them need to be open for doing this don't ask me why but uh, this is what they said at Cruise and Comfort and I'm going to listen to them obviously so I'll be back in the next video here in about 15 minutes and uh, we're gonna go ahead and and start the charging procedure okay guys it's been 20 minutes I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the valves all the way and tight I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and the gauges should remain at negative 30 or 29 depending on your gauge mine's right at negative 30 I'm gonna let it sit here for a while uh, if you go by the auto mechanics AC recharge procedure they say to wait an hour I don't know I'm gonna give it 20 minutes and take a peek I'm pretty certain that if it hasn't moved in 20 minutes it's not gonna move in, in an hour so anyway I'll be back remember both of these are off before pulling off the turning off the um, compressor here or the not the compressor the vacuum sorry uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now and um, that's pretty much it we'll just wait okay it hasn't moved so per the instructions of cruising comfort we are going to well first I'm gonna pierce the can with the adapter that it came with so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that if I can with one hand Actually, I don't even think the can needs to be pierced because it's a um, got a rubber seal on it so now with these cans that automatically seal opened all the way means that it's closed because it has a, a an automatic rubber seal on it so it's got a, it's got a little sweet spot where it's like not all the way down and and not all the way up so go start all the way down first and then you just slowly release it a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a little test here and I'm gonna purge these lines is what I'm gonna do get rid of all the air because you don't want air in the lines and the AC compressor so this will also let me know if 
I have the can open at the right setting there. All right, so that's good. All right, so what I want to do, he wants me to hold the can upside down for this por portion, so I'm going to hold it upside down. I'm going to purge the lines one more time here. Oh, there we go. We got liquid. I got some R134 on me. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Okay, so anyway, yes, you need to purge the lines, though. So now I'm going to open both lines with the AC off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I hear it going in. He says just leave it open. So that's what I'm doing. You can see we got liquid going in there. Once that stops moving, we know that it's not taking any more. Gauges us have stopped moving. Okay, that's about it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off the... Um, high pressure completely. I'm going to go ahead and turn the AC on low. Make sure your AC is on cold, cold, low, and it's going to kick on. And then he says, rotate upside down, hold the upside down for one second, and then hold it right side up for five seconds. So that's what we're going to do. I feel the can bubbling right now, so I'm going to go upside down, 1 1,000, right side up, 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, upside down, 1 1,000. Upside down, 1 1,000, right side up, 2 1,000. 5, 1,000. Upside down. Right side up. 1, 1,000. 2, 1,000. 3, 1,000. 4, 1,000. 5, 1,000. Upside down. 1 second. 1, 1,000. Right side up. Anyway, you just do this back and forth until the can is empty. Once the can is empty, or you think it's empty, my, my can feels pretty empty. I'm going to go ahead and close the low pressure put it on another can and I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to reopen the low pressure and, and rotate the can upward and downward. Yeah, this can is done. So I'm going to put this down just for a second, see if I can show you what I'm doing here. Go ahead and close first your low pressure. It's closed. I'm going to go ahead and and put this in the off position, which is all the way up, just so I don't have to repurge this line again. Okay, it's all the way up. Go ahead and take the can off. 2.2 pounds is what you're supposed to put on this thing, put inside this thing. All right, so this can's spent. Go ahead and put on another one here. Make sure it's nice and tight, not too tight, but nice and tight. Then we're going to go ahead and put the pin down and the sweet spot there. You'll feel it. Because the can likes to make a little, oh, there it is, right there, right around there. Okay, whoop, upside down. I accidentally cut you guys off. Okay, so I've got the new can on. I put the pin down in that sweet spot there. I'm going to go ahead and reopen the valve all the way. And then I'm going to continue doing the procedure.
still going. This one's going a lot slower, but that's supposed to happen. I'm just going to keep doing this. This whole can should be empty, and then we're going to go for a third can. It should be about half of a third can, so I'm just going to keep doing this. Uh, it's hard to do with just one hand, so... I'll be back in the next video. Um, as soon as this is empty, I'm going to put on the third can. Uh, do about half the can. I'll make another video here shortly. Okay, guys, so this will be my final video on the Cruise and Comfort before doing a review video after the complete install is done of the van. Um, of all the components and the bed frame and all that, which, as you know, the bed frame will be going across this way. There'll be a wood panel, and then we're going to leave this section open in a way to where this thing can breathe. And then I still have to run ducting, 4-inch uh, ducting. You can use pretty much any ducting. Uh, that It's recommended not to use the kind that has foil on it, I'm guessing because of condensation or something like that. Um, it's also recommended that you have two... Uh, AC outlet holes so what they recommend is like one up in the corner here uh, maybe one up in a corner here if you can over there um, I'm actually gonna start with one and it's gonna be on the lower side which is not recommended but it's gonna go pretty much right here in the front of the bed which I'll be able to angle it up in different ways I'm also gonna make it to where if we need to, we'll be able to run a tube back this way and up into this area uh, with a vent hole. So we're going to experiment a little bit. I've been running this for about uh, about an hour. Um, of course, the ducting is not run, so I'm just kind of letting it run towards the batteries. The batteries are freezing cold. Uh, as you can see down in that area, it's 75 degrees. Um, it's about 82 in Florida weather right now where we are in, o in Orlando uh, so it's running very cold I also have the condenser running at the highest setting um, so this thing is running the most amount of amps uh, except well the fan blower is on medium so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on high it might make it a little bit louder in here but it's running a lot of amps or pulling a lot of amps right now blowers on full and we're pulling 70 well by default this uh, the build pulls 3 amps so give or tape it's pulling 69 amps right now that's a lot of amps um, I was at 100% battery capacity about an hour ago and we're at 88% now but I'm gonna do some tweaking to this system. So I'm gonna put it on low, and then the condenser fan below, you can wire it differently to where it pulls half the amount of amperage. All right, so it's on low right now, and it says 61.8 amps. By default, we're pulling three amps already, so uh, 59 amps or so, 58 amps that thing is pulling right now. As it gets to op uh, the the temperature that we want it to run at, it's supposed to pull less amperage. Um, so I'm just going to play with this a little bit, see what happens. I'll give you more information in a future video. It does run cold, and with the right system, uh, this definitely is ideal. Considering we're running two Orion DC to DC chargers, which pull 60 amps from the alternator. So that will pull this uh, power of the AC system just fine and our solar panels. So this is going to be a completely off-grid AC system for the most part. Um, we can also plug in a shore power if we want to. So anyway, um, I did have an issue there. Uh, as you know from a previous video, uh, I ran power. Right now it's going straight to the 80 amp Blue C breaker, which goes to the AC unit. Um, I had it going to a Victron 
uh, smart battery protect just like in my last install video of the Victron system right here uh, that is a hundred amp uh, battery protect which you can change the settings of when you want it to cut off power uh, we have it on setting 6a which is 20 percent now I had another one just for this AC unit well it blew up uh, we don't know why I consulted with Cruise and Comfort uh, the main guy over there and I also consulted with my electronics expert who is a Victron certified installer and nobody knows why it blew up so we're assuming it was a defective unit maybe I got a counterfeit unit on Amazon it is possible I don't know so I'm going to be replacing that with the same exact unit uh, which is a 12 24 100 so that's a 12 volt or 24 volt system 100 amp so I'll be replacing that and putting that back right there you can see I've got a little jumper piece there that's going to go from power to the in of the Victron battery protect and then out over to the breaker right now I'm just back bypassing the Victron battery protect I don't need it right now anyway since I'm just testing and monitoring it myself so anyway right now I'm just running the batteries low just testing the system uh, but it all runs great I, I hope this video was helpful if you're gonna be using this uh, cruise and comfort mini split system um, I'm gonna do a full review on this a little bit later uh, but so far, so good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I do need to make some uh, adjustments to this, some things, such as um, I've got my main water drain line right there, which is draining all the water down below, below the uh, near the condenser area. And then I have a couple tubes from the the tray here. This is the condensation tray. And then I have more back here, but I'm not happy with this. Uh, actually, I really should be running straight down. Uh, so I really should drill a hole or something. It's going to be a little complicated uh, drilling a hole right there. But as you can see, uh, i got a little bit of moisture. Eh, I think it dried up. I did have a little bit of moisture, a little bit of water right there in the corner. Um, and you can see I've got some water in the lines here from drain port 2. Um, and it's not draining well because I, I don't have a lot of room and it's running above these pipes here. So I ordered some 90 degree elbow pieces for this 3 8 inch tubing. Uh, so I just have to figure out the best way to get the water out of here. This side is perfectly fine. It's just that this side I may have to drill a hole for. But besides that, it all seems to be running fine. I hope this video was helpful and... Uh, Drop me some questions if you have any. I'm sorry. I'm not going to remake that video. I did say something wrong. Um, I told you on low, well, I've got it back on medium now, and it's pulling 65.2 65 amps, um, and my system just draws on its own about 2.8 amps. I forgot. I've got a halogen plugged in over there, uh, and uh, I'm sure that's pulling quite a few amps so uh, just want to be as accurate as possible and also I've got my uh, Bose over here charging so I'm gonna pull that stuff off here the refrigerator is not plugged in yet so if I unplug this really it's gonna be at my minimum bare minimum of 2.8 amps so um, so it's pulling on medium right now at 58.1 amps so let's call it 55 amps that this AC unit is using right now on medium. And the condenser fans are on full blast. A uh, couple other things to note here. Uh, this is the uh, thermostat, the AC thermostat here. I have Cruise and Comfort making me a... Um, a different unit here that with a variable speed control so it's going to be a little dial that I can turn the fan a knob up and down myself manually and then I'm going to connect the wires that are going to be exposed to a nest 
Uh, so that's going to connect to my Wi-Fi and the van here, and then we can control this re remotely from anywhere in the world, just like my home system. So that's really cool. Forgot to tell you guys that. Um, so yeah, so this will not be used. He's going to be shipping that out about a week. Uh, so that is available. Now the one thing with the Nest is, is that it does use AC power. So you're going to have to uh, to get a um, like a step down converter. They sell them on Amazon. So just look for like a Nest uh, AC plug. And they're like $11. So it's just going to go from um, like a standard outlet to the Nest. Uh, and I don't know how many amps that's going to draw. But I can't imagine it's going to draw very much. But uh, also to note, um, there's two ways you can wire the fan. Um, one is for the maximum amount of power. Uh, where the fans are going full speed down below. You can hook that to a relay and on a switch, and you can go from, uh, you can switch between the two settings, so uh, either parallel or, uh, or in a series. So the way I have them wired right now, they're running full blast, and, uh, and I can cut that, the amperage down uh, quite a bit. So, and I'm just going to put that on a switch next to the wall, next to where the nest is going to be, next to the variable f speed control. So I got a little bit more work to do in tweaking, but uh, for the most part, that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing. Um, in the review, the video review I do of this, in the end, I'll explain how that works and show you this, the variable speed control and how I have it hooked to the nest and all that. That's kind of not really relevant right now. Uh, just wanted to get the install video done and it is done okay guys see you in the next video I'm sorry guys I had to do one more video because it's so cool look at that AC's running and I've got a positive of 0.7 amps 0.6 amps so those puppies are working those are pulling 60 amps or close to it at least from the inverter I'm sorry from the alternator and we are getting not quite free AC but uh, the engine is on and powering the system so very cool and I I'm sure that's gonna fluctuate oh well, we're getting two amps now positive power 1.9 but uh, the Orion DC to DC uh, 12 1230s are doing their job 30 amps a piece sorry for making another video see you in the next one